welcome to another edition of Club Brain and Spotlight. I'm Danny Bayard, your host, with my pal Larry Podwell from iHeartRadio, physical distancing, six feet apart, CDC guidelines. How Danny, you doing, Larry? Danny, great to see you. CDC compliance. Episode 7. Already. Amazing. Can you imagine? Well, we got a great show tonight. We've got uh, Elizabeth we got? DeShield, part two. She was uh, previously on the show, and now we're going to be talking about the Mini Club of South Florida. Excellent. Uh, we visited a, a culinary powerhouse, uh, an amazing Italian restaurant in Palm Beach Gardens, La Messeria. Yeah, we didn't. You did. Well, one I of never us, get the restaurant one of us assignments. Did. <laughs> we also have Elizabeth. <laughs> Stop it. We also have Virginia Phillip, who's the uh, number 11 sommelier in the world. That'll be with us. And, and what then else? your favorite segment of each episode, the flashback. The flashback to when we, we had go the back events. to when we did live events. So Larry, let's just go straight into it. Right. We've got Elizabeth DeShiel, who was previously on the broadcast with the Shakespeare by the Sea Festival, and now with the Mini Club of South Florida. Let's roll that. Let's get this party started. And we also have to talk about another passion. Oh, definitely. And I think you're sitting in front, <laughs> right in front of one. I am so happy to be in this room right now. Um, yes, I am with the Mini Cooper Club of South Florida. Okay. I purchased my own Mini over a year ago now. I can't believe it. It's it still feels brand new. Well, you know, there's something about minis, and I guess you're going to have to expand upon that for us. What is it that you mini owners are so passionate about? Well, I have to say, I was uh, driving a 15-year-old a minivan and... Had Not a mini, but a, but a mini minivan. Van, right. <laughs> I went from one extreme to another in a way. But I had always loved mini ever since I was little, actually. I loved seeing the movies with the Mini Cooper in there, and I was just... En enthralled with them when they were sort of brought back and uh, yet updated more. Updated but and technology I was having and everything, yes. rent a car for work uh -huh. whenever I would go across the state for any of the shows. And they put me into a Mini Cooper Countryman. Okay. And I had my kids with me and I was stunned that I, I was able to fit so much in the car. The ride was so incredibly smooth. The pickup is insane. Everything about the car I was in love with. And uh, I posted about it online, and then my dad talked to me about it, and he said, you know, you really need a new car. And there was no question. And I got my Mini Cooper, and I was able to actually customize it exactly how I wanted it. I wanted the racks on top because I love paddle boarding. My daughter's taken up surfing, and I like getting out there on the waves with her. And it's just sort of a anything goes ready for any adventure and i still grin every time i look at it so creating... now, no, i have to say something yes though. yes yes you really took it even over the top yes. because you even invented a club well the mini cooper club of south florida came about from the passion and discovering that everybody who has a mini cooper shares that same passion and they're always up for an adventure so creating the club really brought together a number of other passionate mini club owners and they are just as go, go, go. Well, I noticed I on am. some videos, you guys have had some great fun. We because have had there was like this really Beatles thing, great. right? Uh, yes, it was singing, the, karaoke. The and, premiere of the movie yesterday, which was What If the Beatles Had Never Existed. And, cool movie. Yes. Comedy. <laughs> and of course, you know, the Fab Four sort of put the Mini Cooper in the uh, popular culture track, but it's come to a whole new generation. But the thing is, when you did that event, it wasn't only the, 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 the movie yesterday, but then you had karaoke, they were singing Beatles songs and yes, having fun. Yes, everybody. And uh, the ladies had fun getting to put on little go-go dresses and everything. <laughs> and for me, I mean, I, I wasn't alive back then when it, you know, uh, back in the days of the Beatles. Uh, but it was but, retro. But the music is just like the mini, timeless. It is, it is for it is. every generation. And we've done a number of other fun fun things since too. Yeah, we I had understand an ice track. cream social. Well, okay. Ice cream social, that's right. The Some kind of race donation track. Thing. Oh my gosh, at Palm Beach Raceway. That was amazing. We actually had a professional uh, instructor there who was able to teach us how to get the most of, out of yeah. our mini. Uh -huh. And even though I felt like I had done a lot of things up to that point with some of my own personal road trips mm -hmm. in it, I learned a few things that I've actually put 
to real life test and taking my turns. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not talking about street racing. She actually went to the track to do no. this in a safe environment, okay? Yes, so we were in a fully safe environment and it was great. I was the slowest out there, but that's operator issue. Now, I understand also that you led a pack all the way out to Lake Okeechobee? I was thrilled for this because I've been blessed as a Florida native to explore our whole state and find all these little back roads and everything. And I was able to, along with the rest of the mini club, introduce a number of people into what really is the breadbasket of Florida. Mm -hmm. And that's go through the gorgeous agricultural places and just explore Florida kind of on road, off road, go all the way out to Okeechobee and the uh, Herbert Hoover dike there. And then we were in downtown historic Okeechobee where we all got to sit around and have lunch together and get to know each is other. Is that that make, Nutmeg Cafe? Nutmeg Cafe. That is such a gorgeous place. It is. Every single chair is different. The tables are different. The food was fantastic. Food's fabulous, yeah. And I mean, best of all, the company. It was such a beautiful ride. And, and I hear the ride back was great through Martin Highway. That Scenic Martin Memorial Highway and the trees form this natural canopy. and. While we all got a little divided up there at the time, it was wonderful because each of the owners, they did their own little video clips and photos, and they were just thanking the rest of the I club. saw those on your Facebook page. Also, you've got your own website. We do. Where event uh, films and pictures and all that. Explore the Mini Club of South Florida. Elizabeth, it has been a pleasure. What it else has. you got for me before we leave? Well, actually, we are looking at, due to social distancing, keeping it socially distant, we can all be within our own safe space in our car and still do a drive out. We are planning on doing um, a trip to Naples. We're going to have like a little road rally going there. Great. Kind of a sister city to Palm Beach. And um, just explore the west coast for a day and back we're having that coming up and then we're going to be planning once things start to safely open a number of other really fun events i'm still uh, trying to get a few other people to join me on a paddle board we could even possibly do that one sa uh, socially distanced as well since we'll be in our own cars and then on our own paddle board but a way to sort of get together get out enjoy and just share the love of all things Mini Cooper. Now, there's something about Mini owners that I see that they want to do everything with their car. Yes. They love movies. Yes. They love getting together and laughing and funning and all that. Now, you had another movie where you even had a dual event where it was kind of a little track yes. and a movie. What was that one? Well, if you recall, um, many of the many of the Mini Coopers were made um, popular by the remaking of a classic movie. And my brain, guys? Italian job. Italian job, that's right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You see, the, they all have a future someplace else if it doesn't yes. work out here. You're going to edit this, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully edit this part out because my mind just blank. No, um, I think we're going to use it. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> of course, the remake of the famous movie, The Italian Job. Mm -hmm. And what we did, thanks to uh, Brayman, Minnie Cooper, um, or Brayman Mini was able to sponsor this wonderful kickoff event of The Italian Job where we went and we watched the remake of The Italian Job and then we ran outside and had a little obstacle course set up where each one of the Mini Cooper owners had to actually load the gold bricks into the back of their Mini and then run it around the obstacle course and we timed it and everything and it was phenomenal. What is we it about this out. car that you go into it as an adult and then suddenly you become a child. What, what you do. <laughs> it just, it, I don't know if it's the toy-like experience combined with its incredible handling and its speed. I know that's what it is for me, but everywhere I go, when I pass other Mini Cooper owners on the road, they'll wave, they'll do a thumbs up. I notice that Mini Cooper drivers, they'll let another Mini Cooper driver go before them. And it never fails whenever I park somewhere, I will step outside, there will be another Mini Cooper owner who has parked their car right next to mine. And I realize I subconsciously or consciously do it myself. I see another, they just like being together. Incredible. There's sort of a bond that you find on the road. And of course, they're speedy everywhere. So if you wanna go somewhere, Quickly, I usually uh, safe bet to pull up behind another Mini Cooper owner. They're going to find a way around. 
There you go, Gad. <laughs> mini culture, a mini cult. Who knows? You got to experience it. I've been sitting with Elizabeth the Shield. Interesting, fun. Shakespeare by the Sea. Make sure you go to that. And the Mini Club of South Florida. All the information is on the screen. Elizabeth, thank you. It's thank been delightful. Thank you so much for having me. Club Raymond members, we'll see you next time. Where does she have the time? She's incredible. She's like a ball of fire. Sure is. To join the Mini Club of South Florida, go to the miniclubofsouthflorida.com to join. Now is the time, Larry. Our winners. Who won. Exactly, we the winners. It. And, and we're the have envelope. An envelope. Where's Joseph with the envelope? Joseph. Uh, the white glove. Um, he's got white glove. Can I see that white glove? Put it back on screen there. The <laughs> white glove treatment <laughs> from Joseph. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Uh, drum roll, please. All right, blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, $50 Waxons Restaurant gift certificates. Two of them, one to a Mr. Mark Gold and the other one to Michael Ahn. They're going to love that place. They're going to love Waxons. it. Waxons. Love it. At the end of the show, we'll tell you how to win one of 20 prizes from Brayman Motor Cars. I'll vouch for uh, Waxons as well. That's right. You, did, you get all the restaurant assignments. <laughs> now, let's clear the air. I know there's been a little friction as of late. Steve Grossman called me in last weekend. Uh -huh. A gentleman came down, purchased five X3s. You now have an assignment. The gentleman owns a, a boiled peanut shack up in uh, Wildwood, and you leave Friday. By car or by plane? <laughs> it just, you've got your gig. That's my assignment. There might even be two of them. I'm on the way, so meanwhile, while I'm eating peanuts, I understand you're eating fine oh, Italian food. Danny, this was phenomenal. I was with the owner, Pepe, and uh, professional golf tour, eight-time champion, Brad Faxon, uh, at La Messeria a couple weeks ago. And just outstanding. Let's go to the tape. Mask on, mask off, gentlemen. I think we're COVID compliant. Yes. Mask off. Larry Podwell, Brave and Spotlight, got a real treat for you this afternoon. We're here at La Masseria in Palm Beach Gardens. Pepe, PGA Golf Tour professional, eight wins on the tour. Brad Faxon, formerly on the Club Raymond magazine. Pepe, thank you for having us. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm glad yes. you pushed your trip to uh, to Rome back a couple days yes, to accommodate yeah, us. Yeah, but, just because uh, of this, yes. So I'm uh, leaving we're thrilled, on Monday. We're yes. thrilled. Yes. Tell us about uh, well, uh, your little La baby Masseria, here. Uh, was born. He says it a little nicer than you do. Do you know? Yeah. That? Yeah. <laughs> La Masseria was born in New York, uh, 2004. Uh, me, Pino, and Enzo, my partner, decided to open uh, uh, La Masseria, and uh, we are from south part of Italy. So me and Enzo. We are from the island of Capri, and Pino is from the region of Apulia. It's uh, from Bari. Uh, so um, we decided to open La Masseria in 2004, and we had a great success. Uh, we bring uh, food. Uh, it's like almost farm-to-table food, mm -hmm. you know, because we grew up in that environment. Pino was in the, raised in an area where uh, there's a uh, you know, farm. Right. So we, we're trying to do simple food and uh, you know bring it to our customers sure. yes fantastic beautiful setting here brad is a partner so a uh, thrill to uh, to see you here as well and uh, your role now with uh, the four restaurants is that well, correct i was lucky enough to marry into uh, the ritchie family R I C C I, and uh, dory my wife's uh, older brother eddie met Pepe and kind of came up with the idea to start the first restaurant in New York City. Right. Uh, then one opened in Rhode Island where we lived, mm -hmm. then another one in New York City, and then this one down here. It's been fabulous because we live right across the street, so, and we get a good discount sometimes. Uh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I'm sure you do. He runs a, a tight ship here. He yes, does run yes, a tight yes, ship. Yeah. And, um, that, uh, it got voted the best Italian restaurant in yes. Palm, Palm Beach Gardens. Uh, the service is spectacular. As you can see, it, every time you come here, you just want to eat whatever they put in front of you. No, this is, uh, this is a treat. Well, I mean, talking about achievement, Masseria uh, was voted best new restaurant opening in New York City on 2004. Along with that, on 2009, we were voted the best pre-theater restaurant in the theater district. And I believe last year, mm -hmm. we were voted again best pre-theater restaurant. 2019. So, you know, we have a good, uh, uh, strong uh, roots in terms of uh, uh, people recognize the name of La Masseria now for the good food and uh, 
good service, and uh, you know we do this with uh, passion and love. Normally, Pepe, it's cars and coffee. Today we're going to have uh, celebration cars and vino. Vino, yes. Brad, All right, tell us about you. what you're currently driving from Bremen. Well, I'm currently driving an X5 uh, 5.0. Um, hey, like that. I actually love it. To be honest with you, I was um, uh, nine years uh, of uh, with uh, Mercedes Benz, mm -hmm. and um, because of my friend Nico Schettino, he's one of the salesmen that comes here a lot. We call each other brothers by injection. <laughs> um, I went in to see him one day, and uh, I walked in in the showroom, and I saw my car. And I said, uh, Nico, if you can get me in that car with a reasonable price, I would love to switch from Mercedes to BMW. And let me tell you, you it's go. been almost a year. I'm the happiest man in the world. Love to I hear that. Love it. They love take it. great care of you. And, yes. Uh, you don't have to be you reliable, don't have to be, uh, fast, and uh, pretty looking. Yes. Uh, yes. They're, uh, they're the best. They're the best. They're Bremen the Motor best. Cars. Brad? I, I've been a BMW guy my whole life, moved down here to Florida six, seven years ago. Um, Brayman, a huge name, obviously, in Florida. Um, this is my second BMW from Brayman. I have an X4 uh, M Comp, which is a competition, which is a pretty sleek car. Um, but we, we have Steve Grossman, the GM of, the, of Brayman, is a neighbor. Um, Chris Huffman, who runs the best service mm -hmm. I've ever seen, is a good friend. We cycle together sometimes, and we're a three BMW family car right now. My wife has that? an X7, my daughter has an X3, and uh, it's great cars. Uh, I like to drive fast. Uh, that's my, my one vice. Well, I have a lot of vices, but that's one of them. I'm actually my family. I'm three. I have uh, X5, my wife X3, and my daughter just recently bought uh, a 320. Wow. How about that? Yeah. Raymond Spotlight, six cars. We're going to go into the kitchen now and see what the chef's got for us. Okay. Good. Hello, my name is Ricardo Fayel. I'm the chef of uh, La Masseria. And today we're going to prepare a uh, lobster. That's Florida lobster. We're going to do, we're going to saute, we're going to do broiled in the oven uh, with the brandy sauce. And then also we're going to make a ravioli. This is homemade ravioli. We make this morning fresh, stuffed with um, a pa a pumpkin, a ricotta, and smoked mozzarella. And we're gonna serve with a sauce with a fresh cherry tomato and a shrimp. So we're gonna start making the lobster. We're gonna saute the lobster. So we're gonna give a nice color, gold color in the meat. Then we're gonna flip it and put it for five minutes in the oven to cook a little bit. So we're gonna start to making the sauce of the ravioli. We're gonna saute a couple of garlic. So when the garlic is nice and gold, we add the shrimp. Now we're gonna add the ravioli. We're gonna cook the ravioli in the hot water. We're gonna add some uh, cherry tomato. Some parsley. And we're gonna add some uh, white wine. Like three or four minutes, it's fresh pasta, so it, it's very fast. We're gonna add to the sauce. And we're gonna toss it a little bit. and we're gonna serve on the plate. And this is our first dish. The spinach pasta ravioli, stuffed with the pumpkin, smoked mozzarella, and with a little uh, uh, cherry tomato and a shrimp sauce. The lobster is cooked, it's almost done. We're gonna flip it one more time. And we're gonna do the sauce. We're gonna add brandy. And we're gonna flambe. A little bit of uh, more olive oil. 
we don't like too much to use olive oil. <laughs> the thing about the seafood, uh, like lobster, shrimp, we don't want to cook too much. We don't want to overcook. So when, uh, when you see the meat that's changing color, it's already done. You don't need to cook too much. So we're going to put it on the plate. There we go. Now I put a little parsley. Little decoration. Now we're gonna finish with the sauce. So that's our lobster, Florida lobster special for tonight. Broiled with a brandy sauce. This is absolutely amazing what we've got here. Pepe, you want to tell us what's... Yes, of course, yes. We had homemade uh, ravioli made with uh, spinach pasta filled with pumpkin with a sh light shrimp white wine sauce. And me and Brad, we have a fresh fail. lobster from Florida. It's uh, pan seared with garlic, fresh herbs, then finish in the oven with uh, brandy and white wine. Absolutely delicious. It looks delicious. It's amazing. It does not get any better than this. I'm here with And Pepe. let's try it out, guys. Yeah. In fact, this looks fantastic. We are in Palm Beach Gardens. You guys are going to love Pepe. it. Thank Danny, you. eat well, your heart yeah. out. Club Brayman Spotlight. Everybody from Brayman, come on out here this weekend. And uh, you are just absolutely going to love the feast that you're going to have here. I'm coming back tomorrow. <laughs> Cheers. Gentlemen. Salute. Cheers. Salute. Salute. Oh, Salute. What, a, what a sound. Now, I wasn't the only one clinking a wine glass. Yeah, but you were the only one eating fine Italian food, yeah, okay? That's, that's fair. But speaking of that, I was with Virginia Phillip at the Wine Academy of Palm Beach, and you've got to see what's in store here. Roll that tape. Club Raymond members, welcome to an edition of Club Raymond Spotlight. We're on location at the Virginia Phillip Wine, Spirits, and Academy here in Palm Beach. I'm with Virginia Phillip, and Virginia, we're socially distanced, CDC guidelines, okay to take the uh, mass off? I think we better, right. especially if we're going <laughs> to I think the audio something. will be a lot better. Yes, especially if you want to taste wine. Oh, there's wine tasting involved. We've got to do something. Got my attention. So, Virginia, you are, of what I understand, something like the top 15 in the world or country, top 11, 12 here as a sommelier. Tell me about that. Uh, so there's a designation called Master Sommelier. Mm -hmm. I was the 10th woman in the United States to pass in 2002 and the 11th woman in the world. Wow. So today we're 250-ish Master Sommeliers and uh, 25 of us are women. First of all, congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank Second you of all, much. I'm sitting with royalty here. Okay, oh. we are a superstar. But what does it take? 250, did you say in the world or in the country? World. My gosh. Yeah, in the world. What makes it such an exclusive club? Um, I wouldn't call it a club per se, but certainly a, a very determined group of individuals who appreciate wine and spirits mm -hmm. and who have a desire to just be at the epitome top of their field in regards to hospitality and knowledge and tasting and being, you know, sharing their knowledge with customers as well as mentoring and sponsoring others. So what did it take? What did you have to do to get to this designation? Yeah, it was a lot of suffering, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tasting and suffering, but you really have to put your life on hold for uh -huh. however long it takes you to get through the program. It took me four and a half years. So no movies, you know, very little outdoor or outside entertainment, a ski trip here and there. Uh, and then once you pass, your, your world kind of opens up again because the time commitment is quite extensive. And at, at the moment, it still requires a lot of floor work. So time commitment doing what? I understand there's tasting. Yeah. Tough job, but somebody's got yeah, to do it. But what about the rest of it? The studying you mentioned? Yeah, so the Master Sommelier Diploma is, encompasses four different parts. Mm -hmm. uh, if we just talk about the last two parts, there are three parts to each, each set. Okay. And there's a theory paper. There is a blind tasting of six wines which is done in 25 minutes to identify great varietal country, region, appellation, quality level, and as well as a practical tasting, which can at times also include a blind tasting, whether it's spirits or a fortified wine. Once you pass level three, you get invited to level four, mm -hmm. and level four is 
pretty much a repetition of that. The differences would be that the accuracy is considered to be at a much higher level. And you can pass a part and come back and try the other two, but you must complete all three parts in three years. And what is the organization that does the certification? Yeah, it's called the Court of Master Sommeliers. It mm -hmm. started in London in the early 70s and moved into the United States in the early 80s. And are you kind of like to say, if I put a bottle of wine here, you can actually taste it and tell me what country it comes from? Uh, it depends on how well practiced I am, but in the past, yes, I could probably get very, very close. Wow, that yes. is incredible. Mm -hmm. That is incredible. Great. So tell me what you do here at the Academy. Yeah, so we are a retail store. We've been in business on the West Palm Beach side. We started mm -hmm. about 11 years ago, 10 years ago, and okay. we moved to Palm Beach in 28, 2017 at the end. So we've been in this location almost, uh, we're, going, we're going to be going into our third year. Now I noticed that you've got, uh, and we'll have the uh, tables on the screen for you, but I noticed that you have, is this a classroom that I'm sitting in? Yes, this is a, a classroom that's, um, fortunately we haven't really been able to use it since COVID, but this mm -hmm. is a classroom that we can accommodate up to, believe it or not, 36 people. So we host tastings in here, whether it's a brand ambassador, it could be a winemaker, it could be a spirits class. For example, this Thursday we have Chincora, which is the tequila behind you. So we have a tequila tasting. Okay. So a variety of different topics I teach as well. My Very partner, cool. Veronica Litton, teaches. So it's fun. I do know that when you Club Raymond members were here and had that wine tasting, we got fabulous feedback. So it's definitely something Great. that a lot of people that enjoy wine would want to do. And we're a fully operational uh, retail store. So we're open from... Uh, Monday through Saturday mm -hmm. from 10 till 7 in season we stay open till 8 and every Sunday 11 to 5. Now I see wine cases coming and going so tell us about some of the wines that you have here. So they it's we do have a set of wines uh -huh. so to speak of typical things that you would find here all the time but we also bring in new product all the time and we're always looking for something mm -hmm. whether it's a spirit whether it's a white or red it could be from Spain it could be from Italy it could be from New Zealand so there's a lot of great new goodies to look for. Do you personally know winemakers around the country, around the world? I do. So yes. do they every now and then call you and say, Virginia, I've got? Yes, they call. <laughs> they offer to host a class or a uh -huh. Zoom tasting with us. So we've had Zoom classes where we have a winemaker from Spain mm -hmm. who's doing a class with us. So it's, you know, they're six hours ahead of us. We're six o'clock here. They're at midnight. Uh -huh. We've done that also with a person from New Zealand, a winemaker from New Zealand, as well as from Italy. And, and they and explain the wine they and how through the all process. The, wines, the history of the region, the history of their winery, the his, uh, anything about technical data about the wine, wine making, wine crafting, the people. And we actually have done a cooking class with my cousin who has a cooking school in the south of Spain. We did that via Zoom as wow, well. Wow, that's yeah, great. That's fun. Do you have a favorite wine? No. It'd be <laughs> like choosing a child or a car, right? <laughs> Speaking of a car, I understand that you still drive a manual transmission Porsche. Yes. Tell me about it. So I started driving uh, Porsches when I was 24. Mm -hmm. I started with a 944 Turbo, uh -huh. always manuals, and worked my way up to a purchase from all of you, a Cayman S with uh -huh. the whole aero kit. Nice. Then a 4S, uh, and now it's just a 4 convertible. So Always manuals, though. Very young in your... How did you get hooked on Porsche at 24? Um, my dad was a car guy, so okay. he loved cars. Mostly domestic, though. Really, he was more of a Corvette Cadillac. He has an old 1950 Mercury Lincoln, which he really did up beautifully. And so we were always into cars. But for me, I just loved them. The shape, cars. the sound. Uh, Porsches in particular. So Porsches and wine. Porsches and wine. And I understand you got some wines that you're going to showcase today? Yes. Right. We do. Well, let's do that. Okay. okay. So right. you'll be seeing us showcasing some wines next. Okay. So we're going to just taste a little wine here. One of our favorites that we generally carry here in the shop. And you're going to explain to me the proper way to smell it and taste it yeah, and all that. Okay. Great. So, Okay, so you always want to hold the glass by the stem. Okay. And there's a couple reasons why we want to do that. First is obviously fingerprints on the glass. We want to keep those away. Mm -hmm. The second would be the temperature. All right. We don't want to affect the temperature. And the third very important reason is, is for those of you who cook, if you've ever cut an onion or a piece of garlic mm -hmm. in the morning, mm -hmm. how long does that stay on a your fingertips? Time. A really long time. Right. So we try and keep our fingers away from the bowl. All right. And then we want to swirl it, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. And what this does is it... Um, 
elevates the esters and the congeners to come up mm -hmm. out of the bowl and into the nose. And we just smell for mm. like, yes, red fruit. That is good. Tell fruits. us what we're smelling and tasting. So here. this has a lot of blackberry, black cherry, a little bit of walnut tones. Uh, there's a hint of earth, but you also get a little bit of that oaks, the little vanilla cinnamon smell. Not overdone, but just judiciously Very used. Light. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe just a little sagebrush. And where's this wine from? This wine is from Bulgari, from Italy. So it's on mm. the beautiful coastline. And Ornelia is going to be one of the most famous super Tuscans in the world. This is their second tier. They have three. They have La Volte, La Serra Nueva, and then, of course, Ornelia. Okay. And so it's a fantastic winery that's been around I love Italian three wines. decades. Let's go ahead and taste it. Delicious, smooth, smooth, elegant, tasty, tasty, robust, robust. And we want to just make sure it's not overpowering. In other words, it's very well balanced, as you can tell. We just opened it. We didn't decant it. Mm -hmm. But if we decanted it, that would give it some more aeration. This would have been perfect for my, my barbecued ribeye on Sunday. Barbecue ribeye, wild boar, <laughs> pasta bolognese, mm. charcuterie board. May I taste again? Absolutely. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. And congratulations on Thank this you. fabulous. Very We're much. sitting in the middle of the wine. It's really not a cellar, but this is where you display your wines. This is one of three rooms we display our wines. And then, of course, our spirit section is in the front of the store. So, so. I see different regions. Can you tell us a little bit about so the this, variety? Yeah, this is the European room. So just to sort of understand, our wines start at $10. In fact, this rack over here is our $10 rack. Uh, we picked wines that we feel are quite frankly, deserve to be on our $10 rack. Mm -hmm. So that's our starting point. And, and everything in here is good. Everything so in here is... So it's not like going to buy a $10 wine at Publix or something. Exactly. Right. right. Our, my team picks it. Ver uh, Veronica Linton's my partner. Gladys is here, Philippe and Amanda. We're a small team. And do you ever get like calls from a winery? Listen, Virginia, I, I got to clear out five cases. Great deal. I'm sending it for your customers. Yes, we <laughs> do. <laughs> I figured. We do. We do. I figured. We have very good relationships with the people we work with. Now, Virginia Phillip is the uh, sommelier that picks all of our wines for our Club Raymond events. So yes. you have been doing this for us for many years. I have. We have totally enjoyed it, and we thank you. We have to so thank do our you. members. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's been a great partnership. As a small business owner, we really, truly appreciate your yeah. support. It's going to have been a great partnership. We're going to take a tour around here to see all the different countries, all the different regions, the different types of wine that you have. And tell us exactly where you're located and your hours of operation. Yes, so we are here in the Royal Point Santa Plaza. Mm -hmm. We're Suite 320, so we're just as you come off the bridge on the right-hand side. Okay. We're here Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. till 7, 8 p.m. during season, and on Sundays from 11 till 5. So Club Raymond members, when you come to Virginia Phillip Wine Spirits and Academy, ask for Virginia herself. Mention that you're a Club Raymond member, you get 10% off and make sure that you come check out this selection. From $10 and up, fabulous wines, on location with Virginia Phillip. I'm Danny Bayard for Club Bremen Spotlight. Virginia, thank you so thank much. You. And cheers. cheers. Cheers, everyone. So make sure you don't throw a dinner party without going first to see Virginia Phillip. So what do we got next? Danny, almost flashback time right after this. What are you waiting for? It's the year-end sales event at Brayman Motor Cars. Save thousands on 1,000 vehicles located on seven indoor floors. Choose from BMW, Mini, Porsche, and pre-owned cars from economy to exotic. Enjoy exceptional offers with Minis from $199 a month and BMWs from $349. The year-end sales event. Come in or buy online at BraymanMotorCars.com. Brayman Motor Cars. We deliver. What's coming up next is when Club Raymond events were pre-COVID-19. Uh, Remember Pistache Restaurant? The flashback, Danny. We transport our Club Raymond members to the City of Lights. Well, here it goes. Watch this video and have a good memory. My name is Andrea Jara and I'm here with Club Raven TV. I'm here to tell you all about our super fun and yummy event, Pistache. We had an event called Taste of Palm Beach at the restaurant Pistache in West Palm Beach, Florida. It was so yummy, so delicious, and let's just check out the video and see how much fun everyone really had.
As you can see, all the food looked delicious. I'm hungry just from watching this video. Comment down below if you're also hungry from watching this video. If you want to stay up to date with all Club Raymond events, make sure you check out www.clubraymond.com and we'll see you at the next event. Bye now. Great wine, great food, a great flashback. Pistache. Another great Club Raymond event. Visit clubraymond.com to take the easy three question quiz about this show to win one of 20 prizes. So what do we have next time, Larry? Another great show coming up, Danny. We're going to go up to uh, the Palm Beach Zoo, revisit the uh, Tiger Cubs. The Tiger Cubs are growing. They are. I'll be over at this new hotel called The Ben. Uh huh. And I understand Beautiful. you're going to be Palm talking Beach to somebody Island. as well. Got a radio personality that uh, you know and uh, I go back a long time with, and you guys are going to love hearing from this guy. For Club Raymond Spotlight, once again, thanks for joining us. Larry Podwell from iHeartRadio. Uh, Danny, great. Always a pleasure. Danny Bayard from Raymond Motorcars. We'll see you next time. Next time.